Hi, and welcome to TalkWord. I'm Marty Dundix, Editor-in-Chief of Weekly Humorous Magazine, and this is TalkWord, a fun little podcast where professionally funny people stop in and tell awkward and cringeworthy stories. You have to tell an awkward and cringeworthy story. I've got a couple. I'm very excited that my guest made it here, all the way from California. She came in just for this. I did. Thank you so much. <laughs> no. <laughs> Courtney Kosak. Kosak, yeah. Kosak. You did it. Thank you. Um, and, and welcome. Thank you. You're a comedian, I'm... writer... Uh, um, podcaster, podcaster uh, bikini model. No, uh, I'm hanging up. <laughs> I'm hanging, hanging up, up my bikini. <laughs> no more, no more Instagram bikini modeling. <laughs> we'll see. TVD. Ah! <laughs> it's hard to let it go, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't know what that's like to have like a photo of yourself and have pe- everyone's like, "Oh, that's so wonderful." So like, I, people look at me and they, they see a good picture and they're like, um, "Oh, you, you look young in this photo." And I'm like, thanks. Like, that's the compliment that oh, I yeah. get. No. That's what, that's what looking good is to me. It's like, oh, you don't look 40. <laughs> I feel like, actually, the bikini thing is not advantageous to my career or whatever. So that's oh, really? the only reason I would Because you want to be up. taken more seriously or something. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in comedy, so it's not like you're being like a civil engineer. It doesn't matter. And also, I feel like... I don't want anyone, I don't want to be up for a job and have like someone's wife be like, nah. Uh, (laughs) I don't think, I don't think that has anything to do with uh, looking good in a bikini though. I think people, people might just look at how pretty you are. You have very nice eyes and they might be like, "Uh uh-uh. I just, I feel like the bikini pushes it to the center of the conversation and it doesn't need to be. It's unnecessary. Okay. Yeah. Is that what you're learning in your maturity? Yeah, I just have a hunch. Yeah, that maybe it's not helping. Okay, <laughs> you'll accept that. I'll answer. accept that. Sure. Yeah, you know. With uh, okay. How how does the boyfriend feel about this? The bikini. Uh, he's you know what a huge benefit for our relationship has always been that he's like incredibly chill with all my decisions and this is fun because you um your podcast is reality bites yes with a y reality bites with a y and this is a podcast that's about being single well i started it because i was a frustrated single person and then i met my boyfriend like a month later (laughs) and how long have you had the podcast going for like over two years yeah so but listen it's an interview-based podcast and we interview all kinds of different people that have a wide spectrum of life experiences mm-hmm. and sexualities and gender identities. And so, you know, we've evolved. To, <laughs> to be, so it's a lot more than just being single. It's a lot more than being single. And uh, one of my co-hosts, Dave Rankin, is our single man. So he's got you, had, you have just one endlessly always single person who gets to be on the show. He's normally single. Yeah. I mean, we would be very happy for him if he found someone. And also any of us could at any time become single yeah. again is there an ongoing effort to try to find him love yeah, uh, yeah we would love that is the entire show just finding this guy a date we yeah i mean some he has a prospect right now that we're excited about has the show individual has the show actually found him any dates like 100 percent from the show no honestly again it's like probably like the bikini thing like it hurts him <laughs> more than it helps <laughs> you know like who wants to be talked about yeah it attracts the wrong kind of person that would want to be talked about it's true and also, yeah, there's a delay on when we release them. So, like, somebody could think that like, he's doing things with other people. Well, it's just, it yeah. gets, it's a little complicated. The bikinis could sponsor the show. I haven't had any offers. People have swim. <laughs> there are swimwear companies out there, if you're listening. We do a lot of sex toys. That, do you? That fits. Um, there was a sex, I'm in a, a we work at 110 Wall Street downtown. That's where the weekly humorous headquarters are. And there was a sex toy, a sex toy company in the building. I don't know if they're here anymore. What are um, they called? They produced a, a, something called the Satisfier. Oh, I don't even know I think what it's a brand vibrator. that is. There's a male and a female version of this. I, I met them at like a mixer. They're very nice people. They do very well. And they sell their, um, they're the number one selling product in Babeland stores, which is like a oh, main, wow. pretty mainstream yeah. sex shop. It's next, it's it's in Park Slope. There's, I'm in, in Brooklyn and there's one like next door to my coffee shop. There's a Babeland. It's a very classy joint. Yeah. No, very listen, I love sex toy establishments. Yeah. There you go. So your show is sponsored by sex toy places. Uh, frequently. Yeah. Frequently. 
I mean, we have other sponsors. HelloFresh has been a sponsor. I don't, I'm not just going to plug our sp- you other can. sponsors. I mean, I've, I have one sponsor. It's a alcohol delivery app called Swill. Go to GetSwill.com. Use code FUNNY5 for $5 off mm. your first order. It's uh, They let you price compare uh, liquor stores in your area for if you like have a bottle of Chardonnay you really like. It'll show you all the places that have it and what they're charging. Oh. You know. It's I, like a coupon circular kinda. that does all the work for you. And this is like a white wine we have on tap that you're enjoying here in a big glass. Yeah, I'm not... Is it okay? It's okay. Is it room temp? It's it's room temp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Oops. not trying to enjoy too much because last... I So this is our second time meeting in mm-hmm. person. And the first time we met in person uh, was when you were in LA. Yeah. And I... I am a lightweight. I get drunk very quickly. And I think I only had three drinks you were total cute that drunk, night. Though. You were just like, hello, I've been, I, I've had a couple of margaritas. Like you were very upfront. <laughs> like you weren't trying to hide it. You were just like giggling and smiling. You're like, hello, I've been here with another, like I had another writing meeting with my writing partner. So I've had some margaritas. So hello. And I was like, hello. <laughs> and you weren't drinking at all. So. I wasn't drinking at all, but I was with another cartoonist who I had met earlier, Ivan Ellers, and he had been drinking at a couple of bars that he was showing me in, in Hollywood. And so but I was, and I, I sat between the two of you at the bar and it was hilariously fun. And I'm a, glad you had a good time. I have the one, next day I was like, we tried, oh, shit. Oh, no. It was great. <laughs> and then we took some. We tried taking selfies, but you were so funny because you're like, I do not approve of that. Kept, oh, I deleted them. You kept on deleting them from the phone. I think we have two that did not get deleted, but I never put them anywhere Please because you don't. were very you were very adamant. Even though, I mean, like, you look great. You're just smiling and no, look normal. Here's the Ivan thing. looks crazy. I look crazy. So I just started doing stand-up, right? I told you this. Did yeah, you, you had just started. So I just started. So now like, I've like... You've done it like one time, I think. Yeah. So I've, now I've done like one show and okay. some mics. But anyway, I ha- one of my bits is about how I'm like... I mean, I start... I have like an earlier thing where I'm like, I'm 35, but I have the modeling aspirations of a 15-year-old, <laughs> and then which is sad and true. Um, and anyway, I later I come back to it and I'm like, I'm not even photogenic. Like that, I say that my Instagram feed looks like just Temple Grandin. <laughs> you, but you are photogenic. No, I'm not. What are you talking about? No, like those pictures. If if you look at me, like in real life, people will be like, "Oh my god, you look like Jennifer Aniston or like Olivia here? Wilde or something." And then when you look at a picture of me, it's seriously like you're like one of those beautiful people that says that they're not pretty enough. What? Okay. Oh, Courtney. I are you thought- kidding me? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm throwing some truth at you, Courtney. <laughs> so, wait. Cringeworthy stories? Is yeah. that what we're doing here? Yeah. Um, you have a cringeworthy story? Should I just hop in? Sure. I'm, I, well, how's stand-up going? I mean, that's a tough transition. At going from comedy writing to, to stand-up, it's, a big, it's well, a big jump. Yeah, but I'm not like... I got to get my HBO special. You know what I mean? But there's a process. Like you're, you know, what's your angle? Like uh, who are you on stage? Like you have to kind of, you kind of figure that out. Actually why I'm excited that I started now versus earlier in my life is that I feel like earlier I would have felt like I needed to be somebody else or like put on more of a facade. Yeah. And now I like know myself enough or I don't know exactly what it is. There's some like maturity that mm-hmm. I'm able to probably be the closest version of myself on stage. And I've like come to terms with all my, you've not been, all my you've weaknesses. You've been knocked down enough. But yeah, yeah, like I know, I know what's funny in like the modeling thing's funny because it's straight up delusional, right? And like I'm aware, <laughs> I'm aware of that delusion. Um, but yeah, it's going good. I, my show went well. I I even sent so one of my ex boyfriends is a stand up and I mm-hmm. I think I sent the video to him and I was like so feedback yeah and he was actually like super nice about it and it's not in his personality so I feel like it's going okay good how uh, how how long of a set did you do uh, I did like seven or eight minutes did it feel like an hour when you were doing it like was it, it was endlessly? so fun yeah the thing is. Yeah, it's so fun. And I... It's like a drug. People get addicted to it. Oh, for sure. I see how that happens. For sure. Um, Yeah. No, I just had a blast doing it. I wished I would have known, like, 
I, I, so I was an actress first, and is that how you be, be, became the LA person? Did you move because you lived in Minnesota? Yes, I so. grew up in Minnesota. I went to college in Missouri. I graduated early, uh, which was a big mistake because I was not fully cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I was not ready to like be out in the real world, but I totally thought I was. Um, and so, yeah, I was like twenty or 21 when I graduated mm-hmm. and then I flitted around a bit. I did a couple independent films. I cool. sold like dramatic. Uh yeah, whatever they were. One was like an apocalypse film nice. and one was like about lifeguards on a beach. Sounds good. Nobody needs to see any of those. Like uh, ba- like Baywatch but at a uh, community pool. Yeah. No, <laughs> at, at like yeah, on Chicago's North Beach. Okay. Yeah. Um and Shore then- Watch. Riff Raff is Riff what Raff. Called. <laughs> I like it. Is it actually, it's called Riff Raff? Yeah, yeah. Is it on Amazon? Can I watch it on Prime? Dude, please. Is it on nobody, Netflix? Everybody like look at it. my picture. Just delete it. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I did that. I sold t-shirts on the Girls Gone Wild tour because I moved out to LA. Okay. And I was like, didn't, this is what I'm saying, so not you fully were, cooked. So you weren't in the Girls Gone Wild video. No. You were just someone selling t-shirts. So yeah, one of the jobs that I had got gotten in college was, uh, it's called promotional modeling. It's, yes. No, you know what this is. It's sure. giving out free shit, basically. Yeah. Oh, and they yeah, want they you to be everywhere. like you... s- semi-attractive. It's really not a high standard. Yeah. Um, so I was doing some of that and... Then I saw this Craigslist ad for a merch girl, mm-hmm. and I moved to LA like a total dumbass. Like not like I had some like idea of LA in my head. That's which... I mean I found that so nice when I was out there when we met. I like the because I've been in New York for sixteen years, seventeen years, and when you go, I mean this is a hard boiled town, and everyone's so jaded and mean, and and it's like dirty and grimy and cold, and the weather anyway. But you go to LA, and it's like it's a town of dreamers. And maybe their dreams oh, yeah. have been destroyed, but like, oh yeah, ninety mo- percent of the people are there are just like so hopeful. Everyone's so hopeful. <laughs> oh. Everybody wants to do this cool, creative, awesome thing, <laughs> and like they're just doing this part time job till they make it. And and but everyone's like that. And there's this kind of vibe, just like this feeling of just like I don't know, this like, this like effervescence of hope and and creativity that kind of is is permeating from the from the town. It's nice. I like it. That's good. You know, it's a vibe. It is a vibe. I mean, it's full of failure, too. It is full of failure. So you sort of have to have that starry eyed, yeah. stupid. So you moved out there with I that starry eyed, stupid. I moved out there, yeah. I had like no, and also my parents are teachers and they were like not ever, you know, it's like they didn't fucking know yeah. what was out going to find me in LA. They like knew they should be scared of it, but like they didn't know exactly, they couldn't help me prepare. Yeah. You know, are you an only child? No, I'm the oldest. You're the I, oldest. That's interesting. I really? feel like someone someone being starry eyed and, and just going for it would be like the youngest. Yes. How many how many are you I the oldest? I have three younger of? brothers. Oh, okay. So you're the only girl. Three I'm the only nine. girl okay. and um yeah. I mean definitely like like I always wanted to do it and my parents telling me I couldn't like was no But have you always been funny? I think so. I also like some of comedy, like s- s- most smart people or most funny people are just pretty smart. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, s- you have to know about a lot, a lot about something to make fun of it. Yeah. Know? And like to come at it in, in like an intelligent, with yeah. an intelligent angle. Um, I feel like I've always been uh, smart and my dad had a, a great sense of humor. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, that's how I grew up. I grew up in a kind of a very funny household. My mom's very funny. My dad was very funny, but like very dry sense of humor. So we always had kind of like one liners or zingers that he would just deliver completely, just you know, emotionless, and but they would be hilarious. And and I lo- he wasn't like a ham. Like I I can be kind of a ham, sure. but he was like a real like subtle, a what? like an Archie Bunker. No, I just more just like he had a real dry sense of humor. Uh. So I thought that was really funny. So he was kind of you know. He had kind of a Steve Martin Letterman esque kind oh. of kind of edge to him, but I grew up watching like old SNL or Blues Brothers or Animal House, like oh, as a cool. young child. And, yeah, you know, my dad wasn't actually f- funny. Like he is 
now he's funny as like a character you know mm-hmm. like my boyfriend finds him like very funny and endearing but um he had a great sense of humor like he thinks the like we share that we think the th- same like human flaws are funny mm-hmm I mean, right? Because we're, like, all our own worst enemy, and, like, that's hilarious. Yeah. (laughs) And that's really... So I feel like that, uh, yeah, definitely, like, fine-tuned my sense of humor. I think that, like, uh, the the things I always find the funniest are the things where um, someone's trying their best, but everything is always falling apart. Yeah. You know? And we're, like, you know, I think physical comedy and slapstick is always funny. But it's always when someone's like really trying, but this like things are always just completely fucked up. I find that always very funny. Yeah, when the forces are all yeah. totally battling you. This poor schmo <laughs> is just know. trying his best. I know, yeah. And De- it's just like the world is always falling apart For around sure. him. For sure. But he always is trying. Like he doesn't let it get to him. He's like, oh, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. I think that's fun. So you moved to LA. You were a, a, a promotional model, a merch girl. Yeah, ill-equipped, so I got this job uh, pretty quickly because I was staying with a friend, um, probably wearing out my welcome on her couch. Um, So I got this job selling T-shirts on the Girls Gone Wild tour. I lasted maybe like six weeks. It was horrible. Like, it was truly, in a way, I'm not being funny. Like, it was, it shook my worldview in this really deep way that took me probably a year a solid year and a half to shake off afterward but and also knowing you just from your comedy like you're a uh like a feminist comedy writer uh from the stuff that i've you know you're very passionate satire with like that edge so knowing that you were exposed to this absolute you know horrible job of, of these, you know, the most misogynistic possible. Oh, my God. Dude, we would go I was, – so I was the only girl on the tour, and we would go out to – I. it was in Canada, so I, like, mm-hmm. met up with them in, like, Vancouver or whatever the fuck. And what kind of a tour was it? What kind they of a – They had a bus. They had a big bus with, like, a, you know, half-naked girl okay. on, the, on the bus, and so we were just super discreet. Um, <laughs> Just and then were try. they were they filming random yeah, girls so they slashing? Would, they would, or were they bringing talent that was? Oh just hell like, no! Okay, Th- their whole thing was that they didn't want to pay for any right. So they would just get talent. Them. They would just like basically go to small towns and like book a an event. It'd be like Girls Gone Wilds coming into the biggest bar in town, and then these talk about starry eyed idiots. These girls would be like, yeah, this is the. I don't know. Think it was some. I'm gonna get a T-shirt for doing this. Yeah, Great. or there was like some famous so or something. There yeah. was something it's else. Like, it's every father's worst nightmare. Oh yeah, they would say stuff. They would have the girls be like, "Hi, Dad." Oh God, that would break my <laughs> heart. That wasn't even like the girl meeting the girls was rough, and just knowing like. Only I don't think I only knew of like one girl that got paid, and that's because she was like a hustler and she did some serious shit. Mm. Um, she was like a stripper, you know, somebody yeah. that like knew that like, okay, at least need to get paid for this. So you lasted on that job for six weeks. Six weeks. Oh, wait, I got to tell you this. This okay. is the worst part uh, for me is that it would be all these guys and they were like incentivized by they would get paid extra if they could film scenes. Right. Mm. So they were always like trying scenes were let's for example a girl eating out her best friend or whatever that's a scene (laughs) so but i was i was expecting (laughs) like a girl kissing another girl that's what i was i was like oh she's about to say girls kissing that might be a low-key scene but really (laughs) what they wanted was the other thing oh i didn't realize it was that pornographic i think that's like the maximum pornographic that it got but like that's 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 dirty that's sure yeah so that's that was their bread and butter though um so these guys would be constantly sc- – oh, and they had very strict standards about what these girls needed to look like, which is uh, it's just so entitled. Yeah. Um, so we would be having lunch. Every time we had lunch, it would be me and these, like, five other guys who were just, like, in m- money-making guy mode. Yeah. They were, like – Maybe would have been crass even if there it wasn't their job, but their or their job was to like point out was to rate girls essentially. Yeah. So they would rate every every female that we came into contact with, which just made me feel like, oh, I am essentially uh, my looks or 
I don't know. I I just didn't. The whole thing was so fucked up. Yeah. And then, I mean, they're not in business anymore, I don't think. I think they Yeah. Got... No, I know. It was so shady. It took a while, though. It took t- way too long. Yeah. And he, Joe Francis, ran the whole thing on his, like, Black American Express card. It was just, like, everything was... Yeah. Eh. Anyway, that's cringeworthy, right? That's very cringeworthy. I'm cringing <laughs> a lot from that. <laughs> That's a bad environment. That's poisonous environment it for you to be so in. It was so toxic. And how old were you? 21? I think I turned 21. Yeah, I was like 20 or 21. Yeah. It's so horrible. So then I couldn't go back to LA afterwards because it's like... Why? Uh, well, my couch situation oh, had sort you of had changed. No place to go. I probably could have made it work, but I like didn't want to. Mm. You know what I mean? It was like... I felt just like disgusting like how would i even land back and figure my shit out so anyway so where'd you go home i uh went back to chicago for a second and then i stayed in uh missouri for legit like six months like i'm telling you like i had to like hibernate yeah like really i worked at a dry cleaners that's like a that's like a traumatic experience working for a a company like that like oh my god it and like i didn't know you know my parents are teachers and obviously like did they know what you were doing i think did you tell so. them i think so i'm sure they weren't happy i mean my parents my poor parents at that stage yeah i'm sure they were super bummed out but no they knew they knew i was in canada they knew about yeah. the whole thing okay um, but, and I also felt like I couldn't go home because I'd just been like, it's like you ran off and joined. Like, it was the like, circus. I was like mind fucked. Yeah. yeah. It was, or mind raped. It was yeah. just like totally gross. Yeah. So yeah, I, I had to put myself back together and then I finally was like, okay, I can move to the twin cities. Um, and I lived there for like six more months or something or maybe a whole year. And then I finally moved back to LA and that's when I stayed for good. Good. Yeah. You were back and better. Back and better. You were healed. At like 23. Yeah. And then you started doing writing? No. So then I so I moved out to act. I still wanted to act at that point. Like dramatic stuff? Um Did you have headshots? I definitely had headshots. I would say yeah, I was probably a better dramatic actress. Did you have the headshots where it's like, here's me like this. Here's me with glasses. Here's me serious. Yeah, here's I know. Ne- happy. I never had like great headshots. In my opinion, mm. like and the, and they didn't work that that well. I mean, I didn't. It was not like I booked an amazing thing off of any of those headshots. Did you do like commercials? <laughs> um, I no. I went on a few commercial auditions. Oh my god, talk. Uh, this is hilarious. So I hadn't gotten any commercial auditions for a long time, but I was. I had a commercial agent, and she finally sent me out for the, <laughs> this thing that was like. We want, it was a car, I can't remember what car company, but they were doing this ad and they were like, okay, this is like a mob vibe. I don't know why I got called in. I think I, I think I had like had an aggressive jawline picture or something. Okay. But they were like, okay, so these are like mob characters. So I, (laughs) I didn't know like, okay, what does it look like if I am a mob person? You have to be like, like kind of jerseyed up a little bit, like big yeah, bangly I, earrings. And I should have maybe like been like a soprano. mobster's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. But I didn't do that. I just straight up did like Joe Pesci. <laughs> so you thought I'll be a mobster and not like a mob wife. Yeah. I yeah. wasn't like, how do I fit into this <laughs> equation? I You're like, just... obviously I'm going to be Joe Pesci. <laughs> That's how I fit into this equation. Oh, my God. You're talking to me. Yeah, basically. Nice. They were probably like, what the hell is going on? It's like, they're like, does she think she's the mobster in this equation? Listen, it's not like, yeah, they didn't ask for a mobster's girlfriend. It was, it was. And what kind of car commercial are we, are we doing here? I don't, I think. It, are they talking about like what a great amount of trunk space there is in this Toyota Camry for bodies? I think ultimately it was like kind of heist, okay, a heist type vibe with like f- four mobsters in a minivan. Okay, so it's kind of like Get Shorty ish. Yeah. All right. Mm. It's a good getaway car. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just so bad. Leave the cannoli in the trunk. There's plenty of space. <laughs> 
I was like me in a tank top talking like Joe Pesci. Callback? No? No? Okay. Come on. <laughs> oh, well. So, yeah. Um, when I transitioned out of acting, I was like doing classical theater, which LA is not a town for that, but yeah. I was doing classical theater um, and realized like, oh, I should write for myself right? Like that would be a way that I could do more things or get more part. I don't know. I yeah. thought like, I thought of it like a means to an end. And then I started doing it and I was like, oh, this is the thing. This is like totally the thing and loved it. And I should have known sooner because like I liked to write as a kid. And like when I was in my BFA program, I loved the assignments where they would be like, I took this like directing course and they'd be like, okay, so like blow out this world and, you know, yeah, basically write a treatment for it. And I fucking love that stuff. So yeah. I don't know why I didn't, it took me, you know, some of us are slow. Hey, you have to kind of figure out what you're good at and what you're passionate at. And what's... Yeah. So my writing partner's husband like knew when he was like nine or what, you know, whatever. Yeah. And like started interning at production companies and then like you know did a short or did a feature length film like while he was in college and like then start so for him to to look at someone like that where their like trajectory is like way smarter and like I, i don't know more planned and then to like look at his experience versus like hers and mine it's like like feasible goals where you're saying i have a plan of attack and they're not hinging on if this person thinks I can be on a billboard or or be on camera. Yeah, and at, it's on also like, a like sitcom, he you know? started working towards this thing when he was like, like I said, nine versus like twenty seven yeah. or twenty eight. It's like, okay, well, yeah, you're way further along. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I I had no idea what I was going to do. I just kind of kept on doing uh, creative, funny things. When did you get into? I went to, I was always, I did art. I did art growing up and I was always into comedy and I was always into filming little skits with a video camera in the basement. Like my, my dad had a video camera and I'd get to go and play with it. So all like middle school and high school, I would like write sketches and get my friends to be in these fun comedy sketches. They were kind of very snl And then I would, I was really into editing and like figuring out how to do like graphics and stuff so i had all this like i i I, like hacked together this whole like production studio of old vhs like old uh uh, videotape recorders and like multiple screens and i had like a reel-to-reel for audio and i was like cutting and splicing and it was really uh lame and silly and it was fun and um and then i went to college for art i went to syracuse for art but then i ended up doing uh radio on the side for fun and then when oh, I the and look at you now! I know. And then everyone starts like everyone starts doing podcasting, and I'm like, yeah, I know how to do that. That's like, come on. That's like junior high stuff. Yeah, I mean, I worked in like comedy uh, morning show radio. Like um, all my internships, I worked at little radio stations, oldie radio stations in Baltimore. Yeah. Good time oldies 105.7 WQSR Rouse and Company in the morning. Good time oldies all day. Love it. It was great. So I did that. And radio then, is still and radio is still alive. People love radio. It's never going away. A total, so that's why I'm in New York. For uh, radio? Oh, yeah. You're in New of, York for like a radio podcast thing. Uh, yeah, I'm doing Air Media has uh, – it's called the Full Spectrum Intensive. Mm-hmm. And it's like a week-long program. Oh, my God. Some of my classmates are like so accomplished. It's crazy. But it's like – the instructors work on like some of the biggest podcasts or like you know produce shows on gimlet or like the daily or Mm -hmm. whatever so that it's super valuable uh information that's practical like they're definitely working um and then yeah the whole goal for me is what i love about podcasting and radio and a lot of times they're one and the same yeah i mean podcasting is pretty much just like on-demand radio now right and so many of the shows you like so many npr shows Mm -hmm. you listen to them as as podcasts and also on the air yeah they produce them they get real popular and then they're they start running them at like three o'clock on a sunday yeah it'll be syndicate yeah yeah Yeah, i love that it's so cool and so yeah i'm a writer i do scripted comedy and 
for me to not need a green light from like a big production company to make something that has like really interesting storytelling is so cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's great. You don't need like a big you don't need a big gatekeeper to tell you that you can and can't do something that people can appreciate and listen to. Like you, as long as you have a minimal amount of equipment and you have a passion for it, you can put it up. Like Yeah. And yeah. you should. Like if you know, those are the people like the and the and the cream rises to the top. So the good stuff people listen to and you know, there's tons and tons of podcasts out there and there's tons and tons of, you know, YouTube channels. And it's and- also just like another way to cut your teeth i mean it's an end for me too i've realized like it's another thing that i'm like similarly passionate about Mm -hmm. um but it's also like all the time that i spend working on narrative arcs for podcasting or radio or whatever is like also helps me as a storyteller doing scripted stuff so when you were working you're working as a writer on danger and eggs yeah on amazon um, which was a highly uh, accomplished and, and and. Ad Bryant did the voice of uh, the the little stunt girl, mm-hmm. and she has a talking egg friend. Uh, the stunt girl's name is Dee Dee Danger, um, and the world is so fun. That show is wild, and they did really cool uh, progressive stuff. Like mm-hmm. there was like an episode that was like pride themed (laughs) and like you know so they did they did it was a really cool show to work on and it was uh, highly acclaimed yeah no it won uh, won an emmy there was all these awards for it and it was always like a kid it was a kid show that was more for also adults so it was like one of those shows that parents could actually appreciate which is important to find because a lot of the shows that like my niece and nephew watch are just absolute garbage but then some of the stuff i love because i notice it's really well written like some of the Lego Batman stuff is hilarious. Yeah. I think the show, I mean, and I didn't, it's like we wrote two episodes, so it's not even like I'm talking about myself really, but the show is like so funny in a real way mm-hmm. to all ages, I think. But then they didn't renew it or it got renewed or it got canceled. Yeah. I don't know exactly. No, it didn't get renewed. I don't think it's as far as I know. Um, but they could always but renew it. They could. Yeah, I don't know what Amazon's, like, rubric is yeah. right now. To me, it was a success, but I don't... I, then you look at Netflix, and all they do is just throw money and seasons at some of these kid shows. They're just like, yeah, we'll, we'll take five seasons. You know, my hunch is that, and this is totally not... This is just my personal hunch, so take it for what it is. But uh, there was, like, a bunch of sexual harassment firings around that time, and one oh. of the people that got fired was the head of programming at amazon so probably didn't help right didn't help yeah no anyway anyway maybe it'll come back one day but that was how how was that working on a show like that uh it was it was you have a writing partner i have a writing yeah i do uh most of the scripted like tv and uh like we wrote a commercial for the election and all that kind of stuff with uh my writing partner sophia alexandra who's a hilarious stand-up comedian and my best friend. Um, and she also is a co-host of Reality Bites. Um, but yeah, we met at an I.O. West class like f- six, no, seven or eight years ago. I think eight years ago. Mm. Um, and finding a good writing partner is like, I mean, I would I would just write by myself if I w- wouldn't have found like the one. I yeah. feel like it is like finding someone that you can marry. Like it's so hard. Because they have to get you. They have to understand you. have your, to get each other. Yeah. You have to be, like, the same level of driven or mm-hmm. you'll drive each other crazy. Um, yeah, our Venn diagram of, like, what we think is funny is, like, kind of beautiful. Um, yeah, I love working with her, so. And do you have other projects you guys are working on together? Uh, yeah, we have a pilot that we're like, oh, God, we just need – we just need like three days <laughs> uninterrupted to finish. Um, yeah, we always have stuff we're working on. And we're doing a really exciting thing with Reality Bites. I don't know how much I should say about this. Uh, but basically, we're going international next year. Ooh. Right? How so? Are you, you going to take the show on the road? 
we sort of yeah and we're gonna tell stories about love and sexuality and intimacy from around the world so like our first trip is to helsinki uh we're just gonna interview some really dope people over there and like they have some kind of interesting things going on like um i'm sure we'll find even more angles but one of the one of the things that struck us right away is uh so it's a it's like one of it's like the happiest country you know when they release those polls yeah and it's a dope place to live like if you're a woman you get like a year off when you have a baby i think i think both partners get like an, an extremely large leave um and the government gives you this, this like starter kit you oh know? cool yeah and everyone's just really well taken care of it's like so women don't want to leave but they're the Finnish men aren't like quite up to their st- standards like they don't not as many of them graduate college and like you know just like there aren't enough so the eligible... Finnish men have it easy they have nothing but accomplished women to pick from and then well the Finnish women have to like lower the standards or leave the country and import men there's another option Marty What's that? and that is to import yeah. better men you're gonna import them so that's what we're finding happen sometimes. It's like a Russian bride situation, but like for just like just higher like, educated yeah. dudes. Come here, sexy Spanish man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and how do they import them? Do they go on like vacations to find men? Um. Okay. So I don't know. TBD. We'll, well. I guess we'll uncover That'd be that. Interesting. So one of the um, couples that we've identified is I that should be on the lookout for some ladies from Helsinki looking to settle down and take me home with them. Do you want to live in Helsinki? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> What's it like? It sounds great. Yeah, no, it sounds amazing. I was just like, Marty, you can't leave this. I can't leave all of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think sometimes they will go study somewhere or whatever and bring the guy back. I think okay. it's probably a very individual thing. Meet some. They're just, I think, more open to, mm-hmm. oh, I meet some buddy somewhere else. Maybe I'll bring him back. Sure. That sounds like a plan. Have you been there before? No, it'll be my first time. And we're going in the winter, so it's like there's like five hours of daylight. Oh, that's interesting. And they have like a major sauna culture. The only thing I think about, yeah, saunas and the Helsinki formula. Isn't that the famous thing, the Helsinki formula? And that was some sort of a thing. Was what that a is skin that? thing? The hell, It was a famous thing. Are you saying formula? Formula. The Helsinki formula was something. I think it was in like the 80s. Helsinki. I'm gonna, I need to figure this out. Some intense Googling happening. But my thumbs are very... The Helsinki... It was a shampoo. Maybe it was about... A, I think it was about hair loss. Yes. They were, they were like the authority on like men... Oh. On male pattern baldness stuff all during... Yeah, the 80s. The Helsinki formula. That's right. It was this, this number one... It was like this huge commercial what campaign. What happened? I don't know. It was, it was like a commercial. It was like a 1986 commercial... For the Helsinki formula, and they had like all the answers that to male to male baldness. And it's still big, yeah, it's still a huge thing. Interesting. It's nothing. It's just like you know, pret or prel. Uh, hair club for men. Yeah, it's like the hair club for men. The Helsinki formula, but they have a lot of like saunas, and they have like the things with the mud. Mm-hmm. We definitely want to do some bathhouse stuff yeah. while we're there. They have a they have a really popular bathhouse. I mean, it's not big, but it's one of the oldest. It's the, I think it's one of the oldest bathhouses in like I want to say in like the, in North America, but I'm probably wrong. Definitely New York City. It's like eighteen something or seventeen mm. something. No, Where is 17. it? What is it called? It's in the Lower East Side. It's called the Russian and Turkish Bathhouse, and they have guys that will like beat you with these big branches, and they have all these different heat rooms, and you go in, and it's so hot. And uh, they have an ice cool, an ice bath, like an ice pool uh-huh. that you go in between the different rooms. There's a radiant heat, there's a steam heat, and there's like, um, it's, you go into this one, and it's, I think it's the radiant heat room, and you go in, and it's like an oven, like it's like stone walls, and it's so hot. And you go in, and it's like your, it's like your face is like in a oven, and you are Ew. burning, and your lips are burning, and there's these big buckets of cold water, these big buckets, and they're constantly – the water is constantly running. Every, and there's like four levels. You just sit and just quietly sit and easy because it's so hot you can't talk. So you're just like, oh, my god. And then every, like every couple <laughs> of seconds – What's the benefit? Yeah, I don't know. You get up and you take a gigantic bucket of cold water and you dump it on your head and then you sit back down. And every couple of seconds, an individual does this. And you're in this room with like 
20 people on these different levels just sitting quietly just baking and you do it for hours and then you feel great and that's it's the russian turkish bathhouse it's in the uh, lower east side it's on like east is it gender divided it's co-ed they have male hours if you want to go all male all female hours for all female so people can otherwise, be like naked otherwise it's or whatever. totally mixed yeah interesting yeah, yeah. Oh. it's everyone's wearing like bathing suits um oh they, you're not totally naked they give you people can be i think you can't be if it's co-ed you can't be like bottomless but women can be topless if they want to be hmm. um you know and it's not just the hotties you know everybody <laughs> no can i be, know i know everybody can be topless I or recent, bottomless i recently went to a spa in uh la where i was like shocked by not shocked i was yeah a lot of older women let it all hang they were getting it yeah Yeah. i think as you get older you become more and more comfortable it's funny as you become fatter and hairier and you're more comfortable being naked they were just like washing their pussies off with hole with hoses they just like didn't i'm sorry can i say that sure (laughs) sorry (laughs) it's okay we're on a delay no we're not i'll believe people always on my podcast are like can i say that after they swear and we're like yeah yeah say more of it (laughs) um yeah uh, you want to feel like people are very less you're less shameful of your body the more disgusting it gets i feel like when you're when you're like better looking but you're young you're like you're more self-conscious much more self-conscious because your standards are higher probably and then the older you get probably the grosser you get the more you're just like i don't care I'm, I'm not going through the effort of being Truly, worried about this. None of it matters. Do you none know what I matters. think of on the regular is uh, Harris Whittles. Do you know who that is? Mm-mm. Very funny comedy writer who unfortunately died of an overdose uh, a couple years ago. Um, but he like wrote on Parks and Rec and a bunch of other shows. He wrote on Sarah Silverman's show like when back in the day. Like he got his start early. Anyway. He's hilarious, and he was so funny on Twitter. And he tweeted, I'm going to butcher this, but to it, it's basically to this effect. Uh, do you ever think someone hates you, and then they like something of yours on Instagram, and then you realize in 100 years we'll all be dead? <laughs> I think of that. I remind myself of that, like, on a almost daily basis. Yeah, none of it's going to matter. None of it matters. No. Anytime I like, I'm like, oh my god, did I just totally shit the bed on that? And, and then I'm like, dude, these people aren't even going to be around to no. remember it. <laughs> Won't matter. So sad, morbid. Yeah. So there's that. You know, we're all going to die. So what are we doing here anyway? Anyway, it's a good way to pass the time. Also, we're sponsored by Swill. Go to getswill.com. <laughs> And so get fresh. What's it called? Get drunk. Yeah. Uh, no, Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. That's it's like a, a meal delivery service. I don't know. People hate to cook for themselves these days. Everybody likes to get things delivered. You yeah. know, like those all those meal kits with all the packaging. I I like going to the grocery store and just buying stuff and making whatever I can. I cook a lot. I don't cook at all. I feel like that's you don't an cook interesting with the boyfriend? gender reversal. It's a nice he cooks. Thing. Okay, well that's good. Yeah, I give him a job. I actually find very few like quote unquote modern women that cook in the same way that you know what I mean. Yeah. And there are way more men. I love. I've, I was brought up. Prop, my dad cooked. Oh, cool. My mom was horrible at cooking. She tried. She was terrible, but she was more of a Swanson TV dinner person. But in her generation, that was super rare, right? Yeah, probably. She was. She made like three things. <laughs> and that was it. And then it was Swanson TV dinner. And my dad cooked. So, and then I, I learned to cook out of necessity because my mom didn't cook. So I would cook. Uh, but I learned and I love cooking now. I cook cool. when I go home to visit them. I cook. It it's seems fun. cathartic if you're into that. I think I have too many like food issues to really what get into What are your food it. issues? You allergic to stuff? Or no, you just hate stuff? Just, uh, I just feel like if you are a woman that grows up in our society, I feel like it's getting better. Uh, but, you know, our culture is like pretty weight sensitive. Oh, you mean food issues like uh, like body image? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that like makes for a complicated relationship that a lot of women have with food. Yeah. Some more than others. I definitely 
uh, I mean, my mom was like hospitalized for anorexia and, and not when I was, uh, before me, like mm. when she was growing up. Um, and they say part of it is like hereditary cause it's really like a control issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a whole separate podcast. <laughs> <laughs> truly i'm working on one <laughs> well what do you like to eat if you if you could eat whatever you liked oh i eat like a dumpster okay. like i eat like stuff from 7-eleven oh. or like i love i almost every morning i i didn't this morning because i'm like out of my natural habitat but almost every morning i eat a uh, golden double stuff oreos that's terrible like for a you. pack i know it's, it's all trans fats coordinate <laughs> i know <laughs> i'm not a big junk food i stopped eating the junk food i ate a lot of junk food growing up and uh i i felt like i was a fat kid um were you yeah i was always kind of pudgy i was always pudgy like i felt like i had a dad bod when i was like 12 that's hilarious and i never stopped you know like all of a sudden <laughs> i woke up i went through i don't know like a summer of body changes and i went from being just like a rail thin kid to be having like this weird kind of this like spare tire and i always had it and i, I was never you know i played sports but i wasn't like good at sports and i wasn't really athletic so i wasn't like working it off i guess but i i never was in good shape it was never it was like a genetic thing i was never there's some ki- people that were always ripped and Do they don't work even out? work out. I would have to work out so much to get any sort of definition, like insane amounts. I've been a person that would go to the gym every day because I was I would become obsessed with it. Like, mm-hmm. why don't I look like these people? Why can't I look like these people? And I would be on a crazy diet, and I would be on a crazy regimen, and it really didn't matter. And I would I would kick oh, my ass, and it didn't. It didn't matter. Like, I would have to go do something insane. Like, I have to do, like, the P90X type insanity. Also, what the fuck are you training for? And like, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, as you get older, you're like, none of this matters. Just don't be, you know, morbidly obese, I guess. Make it so you're happy well, with... if you're happy be like happy that. With your clothes fitting. That, that, that's my main thing, is I get sad when my the clothes that I have feel tight, then I feel bad because I'm like, hey, I don't want to have to go buy new pants. I hate buying new pants because then mm. it's like you've lost. Like, if I have to go buy new pants because I went from, like, a 34 to a 36, that is the the, the biggest amount of mental defeat is yeah. to have to go and buy the exact same pants one size bigger because you just d- can't lose that, you know, two in. So then I'll go and try to lose. I'll try to lose the weight, and I'll go on, like, South Beach, and I'll, I'll go down to No Carve, and I'll be all crazy about it. And that works. And then you... And then you end up breaking it. But I've been good for the past... Uh, year i've I've been yeah, like gluten free ish I did the gluten free ish uh, I don't think I'm allergic to gluten, but I definitely found when I cut it out I lost weight and I sleep so much better oh interesting so i w- I'm less cloudy I'm more sharp mm. so I mean I think there's variations on that, but works for me and it's just it's nice to have boundaries if you give yourself little boundaries and rules to kind of work in yeah it's nice. so so part of like you know i had a super complicated relationship with food and like was kind of like a binge eater and I, whatever. Uh, once I sort of like tackled my stuff Mm -hmm. in early adulthood, then I just have been like on a regimented, it's not super regimented. Like I said, I eat golden double stuff Oreos every day but like you know I work out a certain amount I eat the same amount of food every day Mm -hmm. and I so therefore I like my body doesn't really change size and you're pretty tiny person you can't I mean like I mean I could probably I could I I can gain a lot of weight and still be like okay because I'm about six foot so I can like hide it but I mean smaller people if they gain like anything it changes their entire body yeah because they're only like you know people who are like five two five feet like you can't it's hard it's hard to eat eating's a pain oh eating society um but you do a lot of physical stuff what was your thing what is it Pil- not Pilates. oh my god what was your thing that you did every day that was incredibly hard and i was so impressed that you oh did when i did day? my ab challenge yeah yeah so my normal workout routine is like i do loads of dog walks mm-hmm. so like and i usually like I, you know, want to get at least 10,000 steps a day. Mm-hmm. That's good. And then... Uh, if you're in New York City, you'll get like 25,000. Not even trying. Sometimes, yeah. Like yesterday, was I. it wasn't like I was like trying to walk and I got 11. 
Which in LA, it's like, I have to walk my dog yeah. to do that, you know? Here, no problem. Yeah. Um, one of the benefits of New York. Uh, but it's freezing, so. Yeah, this is not the best time. Uh, and then I do bar. I do, like, yeah, Pilates right. bar, bar, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there are loads of options in LA. I also like Barry's Boot Camp, but that's more of, like, a treat. It's super expensive. Um, yeah, I love... It's basically a lot of, like, using your own body weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's based on, like, a ballet bar? What, is that what it's bar like is? It's like a ballet bar and, like, Pilates combo. Yeah, so it's, like, core strengthening, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. You do a lot of planks and stuff. Yeah, that makes you strong. The planks are very hard. Oh, totally. And when I do it, like, a lot, a lot, I actually do, like, my abs are pretty tight. Not right now. Anyway, I have great abs. I keep them protected under this nice, <laughs> this, like this nice layer of foam. This pillow. Yes, it's very nice. I keep them protect. They're insulated. I want to protect my abs. They're shock. They're shock resistant. <laughs> um. Do you want to hear my embarrassing stories? I do. Okay. Uh. Well, off the top of my head, I did not prepare for this, but I did know that I. I was like, I've got to tell some embarrassing stories and. That was the extent of it. That sounds um, great. So I peed my pants in fourth grade. Okay, we're off to a good start. <laughs> Does that, yeah, uh, in class. Um, fortunately, my mom worked at the school, so she... Are we starting with stories from fourth grade up until like yesterday? Because we're, we're going to be on for a while, I think. Yeah, let's hop around. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be able to pull out. I peed um, my pants in fourth <laughs> grade. With it in class? It was It was the kind of, you know, when you do stuff when you're younger, you think like, oh my God, this is going to haunt me yeah. forever. And it's like, now that's like, who cares? But When you look back on something that was incredibly haunting like that in fourth grade, you think, God, so many worse things have happened to me since then. Yeah. <laughs> and then you right? get kind of sad. <laughs> I mean, I haven't peed my pants in a public place like that. That's good. Since then, but um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't pleasant, and I think the other kids knew what was going on. Um, I what else did I do? Oh, I just had one. I I'm like a terrible klutz, so I almost inevitably, if I like had a crush on someone or whatever, I would fall down the bleachers in front of them nice. or trip or. Uh, I definitely did that in front of Shane Tudorington, this guy that I had an enormous crush on for most of middle school. Oh, I'm running out of stories. Already? Jog my memory, Marty. Tell me about my childhood. Um, were, What kind of childhood were, did you have? Were you like, uh, did you play sports? Were you a cheerleader? I wasn't did you do any good that kind at of stuff? sports. Oh my God. <laughs> I was so bad. And my parents are incredibly athletic. My dad, like, coaches all kinds of sports. He coached basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, like, a, an incredible golf golfer. Both my parents run marathons. My mom coaches wow. cross country. They're, like, very, right? Yeah. That's, like, a whole thing in our family. I'm not athletic at all. Um, and my brothers are extremely athletic. And I think uh, I think it would have been a bigger issue if I would have been a boy. My dad would have been, like, okay, but you need to, like, find this somewhere inside of you yeah (laughs) but uh he was only mildly disappointed with me but this was like mortifying for him is that in sixth grade seventh grade i think it was seventh grade um i made a basket for the other team oh that's very terrible and embarrassing it was it was at the time he made me apologize to my coach (laughs) like but honestly i thought People were like, they were like, no, no, no. And I thought they were saying, go, go, go. Sad. Wow. That's bad. That's not like accidentally kicking in the opponent's goalie. That's like making a shot. I made it. Yeah. Yeah. They had to be like, it's kind of over and back. I don't know if it can count. (laughs) Yeah, that doesn't count. (laughs) So, yeah, not athletic at all. What was your team name? Uh, I think at that point we were the Huskies. Nice. So, yeah, we consolidated schools. Mm. We were the Jackson Blue Jays, and then we were the Jackson County Central. 
Huskies. I played everything. I had to play everything growing up. We, our, our little league area thing was called Green Hornets. We had to play. I had to play green. I had to play year-round sports because you know that's what you make your kids do because it occupies. Wait, them. where are you from? Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Outside Annapolis, and so I played like basketball and soccer, and I just swim and I played baseball, and I was bad at absolutely everything. Mm-hmm. I was Me horrible. Too. Yeah, and I kind of relished in the fact. That I was bad at sports, but I kept on having to play sports. So it was always it was like very hilarious how bad I was. Um, but in like soccer, I was like a fullback, and I would just hang out by the goalie. And I was like, I, I got in trouble. My dad yelled at me because I was uh, I was like picking flowers. So it was like me and the other kid kids were not playing and we weren't paying attention uh, because our team was really good. So the ball wasn't coming to us, so we didn't have to do anything. So I just like hung out. I hung back. Um, Except some clutch moment. Yeah, that. something happened and I completely fucked up everything. Like, I completely wasn't paying attention. But then there was always, like, a clutch moment. I remember in basketball, like, I made the winning basket. Oh. I did, I did like, one good thing. You and redeemed it. You were, like, a little kind I of rede- a Rudy. Yeah. I did one good thing. And then by, when I did that one, I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, I don't have to do anything else for my career of playing sports because I did that one good thing. I got, like, the game ball of baseball. Like, I hit one really good thing that, you know, won the game. I had, like, one winning moment in each sport, so I was happy enough, oh, that's but I good. never consistently did anything right. I, I, I was bad at everything. I didn't have any winning moments, but um, something that's interesting in retrospect is maybe my favorite part of the sports that I played was, like, I would mess around in practice and, like, just be, like, dying and cracking up my teammates to, like, the point of distraction that, so, so what a comedian you were! I know. Yeah, early days. Early days. And now you're just quit. Full sur- yeah, you could have started stand up <laughs> when you were like twelve. I know. <laughs> oh, too. there's still time. I hope so. There's still time. Yeah. So the Reality Bites podcast is going strong. People can listen to it on iTunes. Yeah, we're all wherever you get your Spotify, podcasts. Spotify, Stitcher, Stitcher, Pandora's doing them now. Are they? They just did. You got. You got to get on there. What? How do they do it? No idea. Similar to how Spotify is doing it, they're just doing the same thing. Where it's like a playlist, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can't just. It's like okay, and then after this hour long, you get a random other hour long podcast. Exactly. (laughs) Doesn't really work the same way. And where can people follow you? Is it Reality Bites with a Y? We are Reality Bites Pod with a Y um, on all the social medias. I are we done? Um, I just wanted to get your your stuff out. Okay, it's so fast. Is it fast? I don't know. Maybe it's right. I don't I, know. I always feel like, uh, yeah, I'm inclined. It's like an hour. You're like, are we done already? I'm like, oh uh, my god, no, an hour is plenty long. Are you moving I always, in? <laughs> I always think. I always think a half hour is like, as a listener, is like a great length of a podcast. But when you're doing it, it always feels like, oh man, you're cutting it short. If it's anything less than an hour and a half, <laughs> no, uh, you can find me on the internet at Courtney Kosak, K O C A K. Do it. Maybe you'll see a bikini picture before I retire. Are you going to delete all the Instagram ones? I I need to figure out. I think this is interesting that we're talking about this because it's like a it's like a a, a prep, precipice of your uh, adulthood where you you this is what you were doing and now you're looking back and you're like I I don't want to be like that anymore I want to listen go if, in this direction if there were no consequence to like I do I love taking those pictures and posting them uh yeah I think then you should do it you should do whatever you want to do don't do something because you're afraid no. of what someone's going to think of you no because sometimes you be have you. To- Sometimes you have to step back and be like, okay, am I impeding my career? In if I ways? had abs, I would be shirtless right now. <laughs> All the time. All I'd have a muscle shirt on. Marty, this would be like a Me Too situation. Ugh. See, that's I'd be I- walking around. <laughs> People would be like. I'd be flexing. It was the weirdest meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Follow me, guys. Follow her. I think the funniest thing I saw, because uh, you write things for Weekly Humorous, and you're very funny, and that's how we met, and um, it's delightful meeting you in person. It's so exciting to meet people in real life and, and get to see like what they're actually like, not just mm-hmm. their words. But, but the stuff you write is so funny. And oh, you. Um, you wrote some really funny and charged things um, when you first sent something uh, to me. It was, uh, it was like a sexual assault. It was Valentine's for a bunch of the Me Too guys. So it was like Valentine's 
I think four like Bill Cosby sexual predators. Yeah, sexual predator Valentines, and that was really funny. And then you sent like a real like rage satire uh, thing that was really really well received um, during the Kavanaugh hearings. Oh yeah, and it um, was like this is why you know I, I yeah I wanted to testify in front of I testified before Congress and all my sexual fantasies. It was supposed to be rape fantasies, but whatever. But you, you didn't it. no, you didn't tell me to change it. I didn't tell you to change no, no, it. No, no, no. Previous feedback told me to I make change no it. changes. <laughs> I'm like Really? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's so much effort. It's not because sure. I'm just lazy. No, but also I think it's like yeah, that's a whole that's like if you're like going to be a developmental editor, that's like a whole other thing. You want to just get things that I think are ready. Yeah, right? I do. Yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe also because I'd previously published you, I might say, "Hey, can we cut this word?" If I, if I, if it. Oh, if, for sure. If I thought that it was like gonna cause a problem, but also. But if you were like, oh, this piece is like sixty percent there. It's no. like you're not gonna. I think I would have left uh, rape fantasy in the title if I, if you sent it to me like that. I would have respected your creativity. I liked it, but I knew that. Uh, I knew that it would hit certain people in the wrong way so yeah yeah it did very well thank you and um who was i talking like numbers wise oh yeah you mean it got shared a ton oh good lots of people read it good everyone thought it was great tell me more (laughs) (laughs) but then it was fun because then i think after that i i think i I looked you up on the instagram thing because you're big on the instagram and the funniest thing in the world was um you posted something that i think was like it, it like boiled you down in like thirty seconds, and it was the video of you getting in trouble, being someplace you weren't supposed to be. Oh my god! No, the video of me throwing confetti. Yeah. Okay, so and it was so funny because you were like, "Hey, <laughs> you know," the, the caption was something like, "Hey, do you want to see an adult an adult get scolded?" You know, because <laughs> she wasn't supposed to be somewhere, and you were you were doing kind of like a fun photo shoot with your in this little funny area, and you were doing something, and someone obviously is saying. You can't be there. Get off of there. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you like immediately had Dude. to get down. And it was so funny. Dude. So, uh, yeah, I said, want to see a grown woman get in trouble? So there was this – I don't know if they do this in New York, but in L.A. There are uh, these like pop-up events yeah. where it will just be like for people to go take Instagram pictures. And I did not know that. My dear sweet boyfriend was like, I know what Courtney will want. <laughs> Which is not what I wanted, but it's okay. Yeah. We had fun. Um, and uh, so we went to this place called The Happy Place, and they had, like, a ball pit and, mm-hmm. like, confetti and a bunch of other shit you could take pictures of yourself doing. Um, but apparently I was doing confetti in the wrong area, and I do think that that video is hilarious. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I know. I immediately apologized. <laughs> like... Just no rebellion about it. Everybody goes back to being like seven years old. I do look like a child. I'm sorry. I know. It's like, fuck them. It's like, that's the whole place is that you're supposed to have fun and throw confetti. You're doing it in the wrong spot, though. Sorry, you have to do it over there. You have to have your fun, wild imagination over there, not there. (laughs) Okay. Sorry. But that was very funny. No. Thank you. No problem. Um, oh, yeah. So, so check out my Instagram. Check out her Instagram before she takes all of it down. Um, or until um, she gets sponsored by a bikini place. And then it's all going back up. Oh, my God. That would be a dream. Also, Wouldn't that be? Yeah. I also would really love to pose for Playboy. Uh, I don't know if I can fit it in. It Does Playboy even exist anymore yeah. in, that, in, that, in that realm, though? Like, didn't they stop publishing like, p- pictorials? And uh, then they, they said that they were going to not do like fully nude pictorials, which is totally fine with me. Yeah. Um, but I think that they rescinded that. Because no one wanted to buy their magazine anymore? I don't think that's the only reason people buy their magazine. Oh, people, it's I mean. It's for the writing. It's absolutely for the articles. <laughs> and the cartoons. <laughs> A lot of my cartoonists do cartoons for Playboy, and they have written stuff. And people appreciate it. Listen, I follow Playboy's Instagram because, like, I also appreciate a hot lady. And I'm, like, pretty straight. Yeah. But, you know. Hot uh, hot naked ladies are – I can't believe if they go out of style, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah. That Playboy's like, yeah, this isn't selling magazines anymore. It's like, really? Oh, That's God. so sad. It's so sad. Uh, and uh, One of my uh, writers was a Playboy model. 
Oh, really? No, Juliet Forte. I'll I'll send you her email. You can ask her questions. She oh, was. Uh, oh my god, I would love to. She was. Um, f- what year? Not that long ago, but she just uh, she just had a kid. She lives in Seattle. How Very old nice. was she when she posed? I want to say she she got found when she it was like uh, sexy coed type. Oh yeah, and then See, she like, did it for like two or three years after that. I'm like on the I'm I'm probably too old. I'm aging out of the Playboy, so I need to do it soon. You would have to maybe you could be in like a like a comedy if you, I- issue. If you say a, hot a, girls of comedy, and you, you could be like you know, oh comedy God. writer. Oh my God, Courtney. So we did. We're going to release the video soon, but we did a, a tour of Doc Johnson Dildo Factory. Okay. We got our. Did you see this on my Instagram? I did not. We got our vag- vaginas molded. I mean, and, and Dave got his penis molded. Is Dave the boyfriend? No, Dave. Oh, Dave's the co-host. Dave's, okay. Yeah, he's like a buddy of ours. But uh, so Dave has a has a has a has a cast of Dave. <laughs> we that have, you guys we all to go got pick, to see. We have to go pick them up because they do. It's like plaster first, and then they fill in, and then you get the actual mold. See, now we're getting somewhere, Courtney. This show is not over. <laughs> no, but Sophia was saying she was like, "Dude, we we should be like the first comedian pocket pussies." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the uh, the sex toy company up the sex me. toy company upstairs. <laughs> their satisfier the 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 one for the female is a vibrator, and the one for the men is a pocket pussy. Oh, of course. Yeah, I did not know that. Dave had never used a sex toy before. They brought us like this bounty of product. Yeah, and then he went home and started using a stroker, which is essentially like a bigger pocket pussy. Okay. And, a stroker. You know? I don't know. No. Oh yeah. I'm not like, educated. It's like, it's like a jerk off tool. And he, it was so funny. Huh. He was like, I'm never you know, what why do you need to use a jerk off tool? I don't you know. He like to, fell in love with it. He really? was like, I've had sex with the stroker like forty times in four days. <laughs> That's the problem. When we when they start having like sex robots, people just you'll never see them again. Yeah. No one will leave their house. Why would I leave my house? I have a sex robot. If you ask my clit, the robots have already won. Oh! That's a good way to end, huh? I guess. Oh, this is over? So are you going to have a customized thing made? No. Well, that's expensive. We're working on them. So they, we have they, a whole relationship with these people. So they, did a, <laughs> so they did a plaster cast of you. It's like three steps, right? Okay. Yeah. So it's like they do the mold, which is like plaster. However yeah. they do it well, like when you're getting like... Did they put like the Vaseline so it doesn't stick to you? Well, because I've done a plastic so mold of like my face. They've done that before. I've gotten that, you know. In, Sophia in and I were class. fully waxed. Yeah, we were ready for it, so they didn't need to Vaseline us. Okay, but they did Vaseline Dave. Okay, because he wasn't right. prepared. No, you don't want anything sticking to you. No, in that way. No. Interesting. So okay, so that they they do the first thing is the, like the plaster or whatever. Then they do the mold. Maybe I'm saying maybe the plaster is the mold. Anyway, well they do the plaster and then the inverse of that is the is m- what they pour something into. And then something. They, and then they make basically a U copy, like a statue of your yes. stuff. And then they make it's and then they make a rubberized version of that. Yeah. So first and they make the mold from the plaster and then they pour, let's say silicone or rubber or something into that mold that makes a U. That's a fake you. So we are we are getting what is the second step, which right. is just like the statue of our okay. genitals. Interesting. I can't wait. It's going to be interesting. I'm I'm going to have to listen to this. This is all going to be on the podcast. Uh, we actually shot it uh, video. Wow! And honestly, like, dude, it's so cool. Like, we love these people anyway. The Bravermans are the family that runs Doc Johnson's. Um, and they're incredibly cool and uh yeah like they're they have an artist that they found at an art show who her name's like Anjane, i mm-hmm. think um and she's this amazing colombian woman who like was explaining her artistic inspiration for like sex toys it's so interesting she'll yeah. be like this you know, tube of uh, Christmas balls inspired me to make, you know, this, yeah. like, dildo. It's like, whoa. She's, like, a legit artist. And she, like, going into her little 
like den was so cool yeah. so we in, we did a little interview with her we shot some of the molding of interesting our genitals we interviewed the <laughs> bravermans yeah where can people see this uh it's gonna be on our youtube channel in like a couple weeks what's the youtube channel reality it bites is reality bites with a y reality bites with a y and YouTube. we already have episodes up on the podcast of us interviewing the bravermans and dave telling his horror story about getting his penis molded that's terrifying. I would I would think to get your penis molded. Oh my god! Yeah, for us it was like no pro- like we didn't have to perform, right? Yeah, it was just like, yeah, my vagina is cute. Like, slap oh this stuff yeah, on. he has to be like totally he erect. He has to be hard and stay hard, and oh. it's like a clinical environment. How long did he have to be at attention? <laughs> well, for? I mean, there's some discrepancy in reporting here, but he says. Because you want to be at attention for as long as possible because you want your mold to be as flattering. Yeah. Yeah. Sophia suggested that they use cock rings in the future, and I think that's a great idea. Yeah. But they had not been using those. So what was he doing? Dave had a horror story. Yeah, he was like talking, but it was like he was not in the right mental head space to be doing this. No. He was like having a conversation with us before he was going in, and I was like, Dave, do you need to like get sexy thoughts in your head? Yeah. And he was like, no, I got this. And then he went into the bathroom and he like, he like masturbated for like two minutes to some like girl that he knew that he'd hooked up with picture and then just came out with like a ra- his, he was like raging for a second and then, but it's like cold yeah, and it's like two people, Douglas and Diana were there who are like, you know, she's like his mom's age and like Douglas is like this very sweet dude. So like that and then, and the plast and it's cold. Like it's that. so yeah. cold. Even uh. for me, I was like, <laughs> he had to do it twice. Not to ruin the story. Oh, that's and sad. he was really unsatisfied with his ultimate product, but I think he got a great stand up bit out of it. That would be really depressing to have like a, a really flaccid I sex know. toy made of your Well, stuff. it sounds like they get like porn actors, like professionals come in and won't yeah. be able to perform all the time. Because oh. it's like a totally different thing. I mean yeah. it's not even like you know, there's, like, nothing sexy about... There's, like, dildo wallpaper yeah. or, like, penis wallpaper. But, like, there's not... It's not, like, a sexy environment where they do these molds. And yeah. It's, like, people being, like... They should they should relocate it to, like, a strip club. You know, make a real clinical environment over by the champagne room. Or, you know, kind of... like, just have throw some, dollars on her while have we put some this super profe- cold... Have some <laughs> professionals around. I mean, that could work. They should They, they could do some partnership marketing there. They could. You know? You should pitch them. They could be at the body shop on Sunset. What's the body shop? It's an old school strip club on Sunset Boulevard. Oh. And it says girls, girls, girls on the side. And oh, I know it's that. It's the inspiration yeah, yeah, for yeah. that song, Girls, Girls, Girls. Oh, girls, interesting. Girls, girls, Have you been girls. to Jumbo's Clown Room? I've heard about Jumbo's Clown Room. But I have not been there. Yeah, it's like a nice strip club. Oh, that's good. They have a nice afternoon bikini bar. Afternoon buffet. <laughs> no, it's not like that at all. Uh-huh. It's like cool. It's like you'll see somebody like stripped to the Beatles or something, and it's okay. like kind of like cool punk chicks. I know a couple of the girls; they're rad. Well, that sounds nice. That's my second, my fifth career. Jump, jump, Jumbo's Clown Room. Yeah, our new sponsor is Jumbo's Clown Room. <laughs> Go for the noon buffet. The shrimp is fantastic. <laughs> well, this has been fun. This is great. Courtney Kosak. Nailed it. At Courtney Kosak on Twitter. And Instagram. And her nickname is Coco on Twitter. That's what your name says. That's, yeah. That's what I like to call myself. Is that your nickname? Uh, Sophia calls me Coco all the time. I feel, I feel like Coco's, like, leans into, like, the dumber, more superficial parts of my personality, which I think are funny. Good. Yeah. Embrace it. Yeah. We're all going to be dead soon. Exactly. Just do what you want people worrying about if you look good in the bikini wear a bikini god i'd wear a bikini every day yeah yeah i'm gonna go do some bar right now no i'm not i do the elliptical machine that's what do i do you? it's low impact i have a bad back and you walk around <laughs> new york yeah i walk around i walk a lot i wear all birds so my back feels better all birds you don't know about all birds well i could do a whole show on those they're the most comfortable shoe ever oh you should try to get them as a sponsor I don't think. I mean, they don't need me. Everybody. I mean, I didn't know about Allbirds. Really? 
No. No, oh, they're the most comfortable shoes. They're amazing, and you can put them in the washer dryer. They're awesome. made out of eucalyptus and wool. Oh, I could go on and on about Allbirds, but I won't. Um, thanks for listening. Our show is brought to you by Swill, the liquor store in your pocket. Go to GetSwill.com and use code FUNNY5 for $5 off your first order. Sign up for Weekly Humorous Weekly Email. Go to WeeklyHumorous.com. And I'm sorry you're going to miss our guaranteed delivery of stand-up comedy show, Courtney, because it's January I'm so, 9th. I'm going to have to come back and do it. You should, we'd love to have you on. You could be on. Yes. Um, who do we have coming up? Uh, we have Tom Takar. Uh, he is uh, he's on You Up on the Comedy Central's morning show oh, with cool. Nikki Glaser. Um, he's going to be on, and uh, we have a huge lineup. It's hosted by Kevin McCaffrey. Free tickets at weeklyhumorous.com slash guaranteed delivery. That's downstairs. This place is rad, you guys. Come check it out. That's right. Um, and then follow us at uh, Talkward Podcast and uh, and subscribe and listen to all these these fun things. This has been great. This is awesome. I want to tell you something, Marty. What? You're doing a great fucking job. Thank you. Thank what, you. That's what is plaque well, is I have a plaque on I have a desk <laughs> plaque that says you were doing a great fucking job. I love that. I try. I try. Well, this is Talkward. Uh, follow us. Uh, follow me at Marty Dunnix at Marty Dunnix, and uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Bye. Courtney. Cheers. Bye. Oh, and your show is Reality Bites with a Y. We didn't even say that. <laughs> no, we totally did. Did we? <laughs> we'll learn about sex toys. Okay. <laughs>